What's up, fellow modelers? This is the Tamiya Wildcat. We're going to do some shading of the cockpit areas. Some Velcro glue and some chipping methods. Let's get into it. So right off the bat, the box art is just superb. Tamiya is really good at their box art and um, all of them have a classic look to them. All the parts came in well packaged little packages and the directions are pretty fairly simple. As you can see, this kit is very detailed with lots of rivets and recessed panel lines and making it a great kit to build and to weather and everything about it is just superb. The directions are fairly simple and um, as long as you can read Japanese and English, uh, you could pretty much figure out this kit. It comes in several different variations, which is nice, and uh, I just go with the box art variation as it is tri-colored, and that was the look I was going for. The placement of the sprues uh, was pretty fairly simple, and the test fit was perfect. Like usual, Tommy kits squeeze together, you barely have to glue them. Here I'm cutting out some pieces of the cockpit, and we'll put these together real quick after I sand off the extra sprue parts. The detail in this kit was superb. There's a lot of intricate detail in the cockpit area and uh, it was just super fun to paint and do all of these little details and boxes and little things. The seat kind of fits kind of weird in there but it goes in just fine as long as you have some pressure on it. I painted the interior some olive drab and uh, assembled the landing gear. This assembly was a bit tricky uh, but if you just mess around with it and dink around with it enough, it eventually goes in the slots. By dinking, I mean a couple hours of dinking. I then, after painting the interior uh, olive drab, I highlighted this area with some yellow and it really accentuated um, everything really nicely. I really like the faded look that this yellow gave. So by spraying it in different angles, it gives it a nice faded look. Then I painted the instrument panel black. Once I painted some dials, I then put some clear gloss on top of the dials on the instrument panel. And this is in inside of the wheel well, which is white. I used Mission Models Insignia White to paint these areas as it has a creamy tone to it, so it kind of starts to weather this area. After you paint with this color though, you want to put a couple coats of clear on it as when I weathered it later, it actually pulled the paint off. So just make sure you put some clear gloss coat over it first before you weather it. After all the areas were painted green and black, I then accentuated all of the um, details with a dry brush and some silver. Going around in random motions and really attacking the corners of every box, this makes a great weathered look for your model. I then did the same thing to the seat and the uh, areas around the seat where any raised edges were or any bumps or things like that were. This is probably the best part of weathering the inside of the fuselage as it's very satisfying to watch and it's pretty awesome. I then used the sponge to weather where the feet would be or like where he'd be climbing in or anywhere around that area. And uh, this really gives it that lively look that um, we all know and like. You can rip apart the sponge so that it gives it a different type of texture, but I wanted a nice tight knit texture on this area as there would be a lot of fading here. So uh, after a while, then you can rip up the sponge a little bit to give it a little bit more texture. And I did the same for the seat. Now we can squeeze these parts together and pop it in the fuselage. But first, I'm going to weather it with some Tamiya Black Accent Panel Line color. This is a great way to make your model pretty dirty, give it a little bit more texture and a little bit more life to it. I pretty much coat the interior of this, and I actually didn't put a gloss coat on this before I um, weathered it. I just... I haven't been doing it. It sticks to the paint kind of good and uh, I'm not afraid of what's going to happen. <laughs> so uh, I just put it on and washed it off with some oil paint. Now I'm sealing the fuselage halves together and you can pop it in your fuselage. 
This looks trickier than it actually was because it didn't seem like it was all the way in there, but it slides into those slots perfectly. I don't know why I didn't have any trust in it. So now we can assemble the engine. It's just five little parts and you can't forget that little, um, little black piece that goes in for the prop. I then paint it with Tamiya NATO Black. So it has a tiny bit of a sheen to it, but it's pretty flat. So that once the uh, motor's dry, I can set it aside and work on this wheel bay area, which was a fatal mistake. I did not put a clear gloss, gloss coat over this, uh, over this area and end up ripping all the paint off when I thinned it out. Mm, so don't do that. That's, uh, that's, a, no, that's a big old no-no. Uh, but ended up redoing it and fixing it. So later on, I, uh, I got it all weathered up good. So this is the landing gear here. It comes in three or four parts. Super easy, not fragile at all, very durable, and uh, and highly detailed as well, as it actually looks pretty much exactly the same as the real thing. So that's pretty awesome. And I'm painting it that insignia white. Now I can weather the motor, and I'm just silvering the black, um, just dry brushing all that silver on nicely as much as I can without uh, losing all that detail that I already put in with the flat black. Dab your brush in the paint, dab your brush in the napkin, dry it off real good, and apply it to your model. This is a blue-black I mixed up, and I painted the part of it that it looked kind of like a real color. I don't know. And then I painted these areas bronze, those little, uh, those little tubes bronze, as I thought that looked pretty accurate to what was on the real thing. Then I silver this part and move on to the next step. Shoot, I'm still silver silvering that part and making that aluminum. I thought it would be over sooner than it was, but it wasn't. And now I'm just talking about nothing still. So just keep listening to me talk about nothing. I, uh, yeah, I'm not going to pretend I know everything. I just, just going to keep this in here. Okay, so we're assembling the wing to the fuselage. As you can see, it is one piece. That wing is one piece and that goes on swimmingly. So I am taping the wings together as they were a little bit warped, but not too much of an issue. Then the motor and the cowling can go on to get ready to paint. The wheel wells, uh, this is not a good idea. Don't do this step. It was a bad idea and it didn't work. Now I'm sanding all my seams. Now I'm re-sanding all my panel lines with 1500, 2600, 3600, 9000, and 12000 um, to just sand it all perfectly and using this micro saw to rescribe all my panel lines after that step. This is literally the first time I've used this micro saw right in this scene. And uh, you can see I am very careful, but you don't really have to be careful. As soon as it catches that line, you're good to go. This is micro mask liquid tape. The instructions say to install the landing gear first before that piece goes on. So I'm thinking if I put that piece on with micro liquid tape, I can take it back off pop the landing gear in after all my painting's done and then put it back on after the landing gear is installed again after all of the painting is done on the model so that I don't have to deal with it. It worked out great and it was a great step to do. I definitely suggest doing that for your model. That way you don't have to paint around all the landing gear. These wheels were done in Tamiya flat black and uh, as you can see I'm putting that piece on now and you can take it off as many times as you want as long as uh, you put it on before you um, paint the model again. Now I'm installing all these little parts that go on after the fact. I used Tamiya glue for all of uh, all of these parts. I didn't use any other glue um, other than for the, the wiring that I do later. Now I'm masking off all my tape. I'm using Tamiya 3mm tape and I just go around all these boxes and use a new blade a exacto knife to cut all these lines nicely. This is a strenuous process and in future videos I think I'm going to try a different method. We'll see how that works out. And uh, and yeah, so now I can put some crystal clear um, glue on it and pop it onto the model. I like the crystal clear glue because it actually fills in any spaces or gaps in that model. Here I'm applying that liquid uh, tape again to the canopy so I can have it open or closed and have it stick to the model good. I put a little left uh, left rudder into this kit. I think it gives it a little bit of life. And now I'm painting this area interior green. So to something I've never done before, this is black basing and I am actually 
going to do this model legit. So in previous videos, I do my airbrushing a certain way and I've, I mean, I've adapted the, the skill to airbrush a certain way and it's not really a skill, it's just patience. Patience and time. So as much as time and patience you have, you can do this. But here I'm just applying a nice even coat of um, black and this will be my pre-shading effect number one out of six so i went ham on this model i went really crazy um doing as much as i can to weather this blue because glossy sea blue is so boring and uh these wildcats were just beat the hell out of man they were just they're crash landed basically on aircraft carriers their whole life and every single picture that i've ever seen of them they're just ruined i mean they're just ruined so um i really did my due diligence to put as much life into these panel lines as much as possible so i went around and did tiny little shading uh everywhere in between the panel lines with some white i put a lot of time into all of this weathering and most of this video is actually airbrushing. So I hope you're excited. I love watching uh, other YouTubers airbrush, but I basically just go around all these panel lines and just doing the white. Now this is for the underside of the model. And what I really wanted to accentuate uh, for the underside of the model was different panels and different panel lines. So what I go through and do is actually shade certain areas more than others um, so that I can go through with a different color, uh, just a slightly different color with either more white or more gray or more black and accentuate different uh, different types of panel lines so that it kind of looks like there's different panels on it almost like just barely a, a different color or so so here i'm going on the other underside of the aircraft again just with a very light tint of white and just barely doing anything so far as this was my first coat of mottling, um, this is uh, just basically wanted to get a baseline of where my color was and trying to figure out my airbrush too because um, I've done this effect before but not in the uh, way that I did it on this kit. So here you can see two different colors I've already put down and here I'm putting the third color down um, in these areas. And uh, this is really where the magic happens on these lifelike life kits. So I lightly shade in the center of the panels in the same color that I'm painting after I've done the white and I just lightly keep coloring those three, four, five, six different times and then with the paint pretty thinned out I go over it uh, very lightly with another coat just to make sure that I didn't lose all the work that I had already put into it. I am using Mission Models paints here, and uh, I think this is a good pick. Um, it, it sprays really well. Um, the stuff is just great to spray. Better than Vallejo for sure. It's all water-based, and it doesn't it doesn't uh, it doesn't clog up your airbrush as much as Vallejo. Even though I swear by Vallejo. I mean, if you just deal with it, then it's fine. But um, it can be frustrating sometimes. So then you can see all those different panels and uh, you can really tell that this airplane is just beat the crap out of. And that's the look that I was going to. I just wanted to beat the cra crap out of it just like it was in real life. And uh, it just looks really good. So here I'm just using that gray with white in it and I'm just blending all these different types of colors to make all these panels really pop. I kind of kept just going lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and my lightest color was going to be the ailerons and the elevators and um, so that was my main point behind um, getting these really really light colors just adding white to it or if I wanted a different color I'd add some black and gray to it and uh, I just kept doing that until I really got the look that I was looking for. The elevators and the ailerons were the same really brightest color out of the whole model so um, yeah that's just how I ended up doing it and it's almost basically white but the uh, underside was kind of grayish so it's kind of in the middle grounds there is some uh, some wildcats were gray and some undersides were actually white so I kind of blended it together and made my own type of bottom basically accentuating either either color all my paints here were thinned out basically 50-50. Uh, I can always be sure that there's not going to be too much water in it when I do 50-50. If I do 70-30, I, 
I usually end up having problems. So here is the underside now. You can tell how good it looks. Um, I'm really tickled with how this came out. So this is some chipping fluid here, and I'm applying this to this chromate green color on top that I custom blended. And uh, this was a mistake. Don't do not do this. Um, when you do chipping fluid, definitely apply it with a brush instead of airbrushing it as I put way too much on. This is Mission Models um, C Glossy Blue. And man, this color is gorgeous. I really like this color that Mission Models has. It has almost a bronzy tint to it, just like all their models. It has like a bronzy, bronze type of tinge to it, and it just looks superb. It really catches my eye. This is a really great color. What I did here was with the color that I already had, I just added a few drops of black to it as to accentuate all those panel lines. So now I'm doing post shading with all the panel lines. Um, before on the underside, I did modeling effect and on the top side, now I'm flipping this switch and doing a post shading effect. So here now I'm adding white to all these panel lines and this color. So I just added like four or five drops of white, mix it into my color and started um, post shading all of the panels and stuff in the middle of it. So I post shaded with the black and now I'm post shading with white as to give it this really sun dried um, beat the hell out of type of look. Uh, I spent way too much long on a ship type look. So I really wanted to give uh, the top panels um, accent too. So this is the base coat here. I'm just adding a little bit of white to all of the panels. And then I'm going to go through with another color. As you can see, I've been mixing paint in my airbrush just to give everything um, style and art and, and just a different look to everything. I go through about five different times of adding white to my airbrush, mixing it up, and doing more panels. Uh, that's what gave this model its really awesome um, colored look. I also went from the wings that are going to get the most sunlight and the top. So my wings and the top of the airplane got the same type of effect as to like sun damage and things that it could happen in the winter in the in the cold like sea weathering type of environment and then i faded down so i faded down the fuselage and i faded down the ailerons because they're going to be a way lighter color than anything else um if it were a fabric and uh i just kept layering it layering it with different colors and different uh, different textures and different splatterings and different um, types of things to give it a super realistic look I've never done it before like this and I put a lot of time into it and I think it was totally worth it now with the chipping fluid that I sprayed on I sprayed way too much on and it could have chipped the whole thing away so I was really careful at putting water on it and, and just making sure that everything was good this is sticky note paper that I put over the wings so that I could do the third color. So you could also use rubber bands here as I didn't have any rubber bands. So I just used some pipe cleaners and twisted them at the bottom to make sure that it never moved. This is a good way to mask your models without any worry about paint stripping off. Now I'm applying this third medium blue color to the model as this is the sweetest look. And I am freehanding it, which... It wasn't really a mistake. I wouldn't call it a mistake. I would just say that um, it looked more weathered than I was really going for. And that's kind of what I was going for. So it ended up working out. And whatever colors that I was able to do afterwards, I was able to fix with the previous colors that I had. So it really didn't matter if I went too much or too little. I was able to fix everything and uh, it looked really good at the end. So here I'm just modeling those inside of the panel lines, making sure to not spray too much because that blue color already accentuated all of, uh, all of my panel lines. Now I'm just following the instructions here of where the actual blue color landed uh, is in terms of where it, um, where it was on the bottom and where it was on the top and just going through and making sure all my panels were highlighted without losing too much of the, the baseline between the colors. As that's what I find in a lot of model kits is that you do some airbrushing and then you, if you have three colors, your third color kind of is the lightest color because your two other colors kind of took away all your base shading. So either you post shade or uh, you do these other techniques in order to not lose those shade lines that you had in there. So I was really careful with the airbrush and where I was where I was going with on the on the panel lines. 
was really nice to have the tail just off and not having to deal with it on the on the kit as it is a different color and um not really a different color but since it was fabric i painted it a different color to really accent uh the type of type of shading it was here i'm applying some dirt and grime to the landing gear as i don't know uh there's dirt and grime on the well maybe not but there's dirt and grime some places this rust effect i'm sure that it wasn't rusty but some of the pictures that i saw it did have an orangish tinge on those bolts so i just tried to mimic that now here's the best part the decals suck like these are the worst decals ever <laughs> i had such a problem with them every single one it pulled up paint every single every single time they broke and they chipped away so i just dealt with them the best i could and made the best of it and as you can see right there I, it chipped off the numbers were fine but the bigger ones were definitely a problem so just know that going into the next one i think the next wildcat i do i'm definitely gonna just mask off and paint everything it looks better anyways so i'd rather do it here's i'm pulling off some sponge that i used for the inner wheel bay and uh, just taking it out now i can put my elevators back on as i painted them without them on and i applied some gray wash to the top now and this really gave it a good look uh, i really enjoyed very satisfying watching this actually um i really enjoyed putting this gray on as it really did give it another level to this weathering effect and the more levels you have man the more realistic it gets and this is really my first attempt at doing every single step every single level i could possibly do to accentuate and like to put as much life into all the all these panels now I'm just pulling some of that gray out and pulling some of these uh, some of this black out. I also did black on the panel lines on the lighter colors so that it would just really give it some some good grime, some good heat, some good life to it. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm just pulling all this all this oil out and just making sure that it's not too dirty, but it's dirty enough to realize that this thing dealt with a war. So, since I already described what I was doing here, and I have too much footage to even think about what else to say, I mean, I'm just brushing, brushing oils with oil thinner, and just, that's all I'm doing. So, that's, yeah, I mean, what else is there to say? So, here's the finish of the uh, the bottom here. I pulled some paint out of those areas, and, uh, yeah, man, this is probably some of my best work here. Pop the wheels on as they turned out pretty good with that flat uh flat rubber look and now i'm putting some black into this decal because it's just a, it's a problem it's seriously it's it's way too new for how dirty i wanted this model to look so i put some black in there i put some brown in there i put some tan in there and i just smeared it all around the decal um, to try to give it a really faded look to make it look kind of painted into the into the model itself because it was literally it was so thick that it didn't go into any panel line or anything so then i put my clear gloss on everything and um or clear clear flat on everything and then i can uh, model the rest of this i'm using a sponge and doing some chipping methods with the sponge to pull out and make it look like um some dudes were walking on it and trying to just give it as much detail and kind of wear and tear as possible I really like how the chipping fluid worked out on this kit as um, it did pull out some of those chromate greens and but not too much and I was really worried about it being too much and it wasn't and now some of the most satisfying things to watch which is tape pulling off of the canopy and uh, it's the most satisfying thing to do anyways because you're pretty much done with your model I mean install the prop and it actually spins really good so that's another thing about this kit that I was surprised about. Usually props don't spin that well, but it literally spun on a dime. Now I'm applying some shading effects, and I realized that my paintbrush was spat, sp uh, my uh, airbrush was splattering, so I was like, eh, well, never mind with that. I didn't want to clean it out, so I did this method instead, which actually I've pretty much proven that it, it works really good. It, look, it works and looks really good for um, fading out all those things and it's super easy to do so i just i can't argue with it even though it looks a little bit wacky a little bit not realistic i just i couldn't i couldn't help it so here's the final pictures thank you guys so much for watching and uh enjoy these final pics as i do show the prop spinning in it and uh yeah it's 
it's a super cool model you, sh you guys should definitely get one of these um really great kit really really great kit super fun the only problem was the decals and whatever that it's just one of the things you got to deal with sometimes so thanks again for watching definitely subscribe and like for more uh, i'm doing a lot of time yet kits and a lot of different things so um stay tuned subscribe and i'll see you in the next video let's get back to building enjoy these final pictures